You need truth and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon, and you are tuning into another episode of the Brother Leon Show. So today, guys, we are going to talk about sex, and we are going to talk about talking dirty after dark. I just want you to just marinate in that for a little bit because when we talk about sex in the church, a lot of times we get this. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that we have to begin to take the stigma off of church. We got to begin to take the stigma off. That, that church is a place that keeps us bound, that keeps us not able to grow as people. Because I do believe that if we would just take and tweak certain things about the church, that our churches could definitely be places of learning, places of impartation. And we could just get out of this whole thing of it just being a social club. Because that is what church has become at times. It has become a social club. We have to begin to believe that that we as the body of believers, that we are the church. And that the building per se, the brick and mortar, it may have the name of church. It may be the place where we come and we congregate. But we got to begin to see that we are the church. We the people. We the people. The church. Because God is not coming back to get a building. He's coming back to get his people. He's coming back to get his bride. And one thing that we have to begin to do is take the shame off of the people. That's why the prophetic and the apostolic is needed for such a time as this. To take away the shame. And that is why deliverance is so crucial in this time. Because I look at it like this. If if the church does not have deliverance, how can we take away the shame? How is it that we can always say that there is no shame in the house of God? And that is a lie. There is. Because we as the people have not had deliverance. We don't walk in love. We we walk in fear, proclaiming faith. And so, you know, it's so many things that I could just delve into just off of that alone when it comes to the fear. But the one thing that I want you to get out of this is that the Bible says is that perfect love. Or mature love cast out fear because fear hath torment. And the Bible also says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Power and of love and of a sound mind. A sound mind. A mind that's not flip-flopping back and forth. A mind that is not uh, uh, caught between two opinions. Sound mind. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that when it comes to sex, when it comes to sexuality in the church, the body of believers, we have got to take the stigma off. Just like you take your clothes off, we got to begin to take the stigma off. And that's the God knows truth, because at this day and age, I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't begin to take the stigma off of sex, then our altars are going to be filled with people who are there because of sex. We got to begin to talk about sex more in the church because there are so many people whose identities, whose identities are intertwined in their sexuality. I'm going to tell you that right now. There are so many people who have been victimized sexually. There are so many people that that, that are, are, are in that crossroads 
of sex. And the one thing I'm going to tell you is this, is that God gave us sex so that we could replenish the earth, so that we can make our bonds in marriage stronger. And he also gave us sex so that we can begin to birth generations. Because the one thing I'm going to tell you about life, life is prophetic. And life is seasonal. Every man on the inside of him, he has the seed of life. That man has the seed of the generational tree. And when he plants that seed in that woman, that woman births the generation. But I'm going to tell you right now, man, we have been so careless with our sexual energies, with our seed, giving, you know, I mean, I mean, just taking, giving yourselves just because. And we've made sex so trivial. But when it comes to the uh, sex in the church, we got to take that stigma off and we can't allow it to be so trivial. And that's the God knows truth. So we can ready to go in. I'm going to tell you right now, if you got young kids, do not play this around them because I'm going to be explicit. I'm going to try my best not to cuss, but most likely it's going to come out. I'm going to tell you that right now. So like I've been telling people, hey, I'm going to be the realest person, realest minister that you know. And when it comes to certain subjects, it's going to come out sometimes until, until God delivers me from it. So I find some different words. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I got to get some different words. But I'm very passionate when it comes to, to certain subject matters. And, and, and it's just, just that's just me. And, and the one thing I will say is this. I may cuss, but I will not curse. And that's the God knows truth. There's a difference. I ain't going to pronounce death and destruction over you or your babies and cause your hair to fall out. No, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not the type of prophet where if you don't uh, agree with me, I'm going to curse you. No, you can disagree with me. And we can agree to disagree. So, let's go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and to every time. And, oh, no, I read that wrong. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And that is Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. So, that's the one thing that I want you to understand is that sex comes at a time. You know, when you reach that age where, where you have blossomed sexually, that is for a season of life. And that and, and it begins, and then at times, it will end. There is a time where it will, where it will end. And so this is the reason why you have to begin to look at your body and your sexual energy. As, as currency, because some of you, man, you have made, you know, investments in nothing that was going to bring a yield. It wasn't going to yield nothing. It was a loss. And you just can't keep investing in things and in people and in time that's just going to take you, you know, out of the whole, just, just going to take away from you. Because once you give it out, you can't give it, you can't get it back. And some of you, you have given your best investments, your best times to people who are unworthy. And then the crazy part about it is that life has a way of hooking you up with the person that you that you should be with, a person that's going to bless you, a, a person that is there for your life. And here it is, you know, you done gave, you know, you done gave out your best moves, you know, to, to Johnny and Susie. You know, here it is, you done gave the best part of your life to Johnny, and here it is, you hook up with Dan, and you ain't got nothing left. You, you got a little bit of skills, but, you know, you you look at how you used to be, and you look at yourself now, and you're like, dang, I wish I would have waited. There's so many people out here that say, I wish I would have waited. You know, some of you are thankful for the kids that you have. Some women are thankful for the kids that you have, but you're looking at the fact of, you know, if I didn't waste my time in this relationship, if I didn't waste my time in that relationship, and here it is, I got so frustrated that now I didn't tied my tubes, and now here it is, I got I got a good man, and I can't even give him a baby. I'm serious, and 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 the reason why that happens is because a lot of times people get frustrated in relationships and get tired, 
And this is what I mean when I say we just can't be so trivial with, with our sex. Just because you're in a relationship don't mean you, you give that man a baby out of that relationship. And just because, men, you're in a relationship with that woman, that don't mean that, that, that you, you, know, you, you start planting your seed in her with no intention to stay. Because I see so many brothers, they don't want to put the condom on. But then, you know, the girl gets pregnant, the woman gets pregnant, and then next thing you know, psh, ain't mine. Man, Negro, please. You, man, you was, man, you was all up in her. You were smacking cakes big time. I mean, you were smacking cakes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and twice on Sunday. Yeah, that, that baby is yours. So-and-so, you are the father. Ah! And so at the end of the day, man, we got to begin to get to the place where we take the stigma off of sex when it comes to the church. And then we got to begin to make sure that our choices line up. Because I'm going to tell you, man, if, if you don't have that emotional connection at home, those connections in the home, I'm going to tell you, the message of celibacy is not going to work. And you have to begin to really, really be transparent with your kids because the one thing, when I was growing up, I heard the message, don't fornicate. And my question is, why? And that's the answer that we have to begin to give to our adolescents and our kids today. Because if we don't give them a why, they're going to find out for themselves. And so I was very, I made sure that I was very transparent with my sons, with my daughters. I ain't going to lie. Some of them, they was like, oh, can I, can I be excused from the table? I don't want, man, please, y'all done hurt worse. And, now, and, and, and I told them everything, everything about my life, my mistakes. Because my thing is, is that, you know, as a man, I'm giving you how I was as a teen because I see, I see that. Now, granted, the times may have changed, but the Bible says that there is no new thing under the sun. And so if it was sex in my generation, it's sex in this generation. If it was drugs, a certain type of drug in my generation, what do you think it is for this generation? If it was music in my generation, talking about big booties and stuff like that, what do you think it is for this generation? This generation's rap music just sounds like nothing but strip club only. Seriously. And that's just my opinion. And, and the crazy thing about it is that we have to get to the place where we get beyond identifying with art. Because I'm going to tell you, man, when you try to make art imitate life, you're going to have a failure. And that's the God knows truth. Because I'm going to tell you, man, these artists, all they are doing is selling you an image. Even, even pornography, all they are doing is selling you an image. All they're doing is giving you a money shot. That's it. And that's the thing with porn. They will, they will sell you the image. They will give you the act. But the crazy thing about it is that you may look at that scene. And, okay, oh, man, that's like 10 minutes. Man, please. They probably been filming that bad boy for at least 45 to an hour. And the way that they make money off of porn is the money shot. The money shot. The woman shaking her ass and the dude just ejaculating and coming all over it. Or how, however your, your fetish may be. Maybe it might be facials. Maybe it might be oral. I don't know. But at the end of the day, that's what makes the money off of porn. It's the money shot. And so many people get caught in the trap of the money shot. You're getting caught in the trap of these, you know, erotic novels. Because I'm going to tell you, man, the one thing that they, they do in porn is that they take a man's psyche and they put it on, on in, a, in a woman. To make her think that, man, she's insatiable. You got to give it to her like this. And she going to take it in her ass like that. And I mean, man, just crazy stuff. And at the end of the day, man, I'm going to tell you. They sell that scene and they make you believe that that's how every woman is. And the sad part is, is that there's, there's a lot of women who are involved with men who have porn addictions. And they trying to live up to an image they, that they can't even, can't even keep up with. You trying to live up to... to to, to, you know, to some of these porn, porn women. You can't live up to that. 
Because I'm going to tell you, man, when it comes to that, man, they practice that. They on the set every day. And I'm going to tell you this. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. So they are approved for that. But at the end of the day, when the cameras are off, there's loneliness involved. When you start, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, look at, look at that documentary, Life After Porn. So many tears. And then the crazy part is, is that a lot, a lot of these act, actresses and actors, it's hard for them to go out in public, especially the females. Somebody always constantly, you know, yo, hey, you know what I mean? And the crazy thing about it is that sometimes people just want to be left alone. Some of them, you know, they, they, they take retirement and they make money off of it, still giving appearances at strip clubs and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, man, some of them is like, I wish to God, cause I can't even go out with my kids. And some of them have even gotten into ministry and they've turned their lives around. But the one thing that, that they ain't going to tell you, man, that, that lifestyle will, will, will suck you up. And this is the reason why I'm telling you right now is that we have to begin to guard. We have to begin to guard our kids. I'm serious because here's the one thing. If we as the church do not begin to start talking about sex, our kids are going to learn it outside. They're going to learn it from the world. They're going to learn it from pornography. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have your born again son trying to find, you know, the nest miss big booty, you know, delicious, whatever <laughs> you want to call her. And he's like, yeah, I'm believing God for that. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, God may deliver him, deliver to him a good woman, but because she's not what he imagined sexually, now all of a sudden he don't want to be with her no more. And that's what I mean when I say imagination versus reality, because we have gotten to the place where we have put an imagination of how sex is supposed to be, even when it comes to the church. We've imagined. We've imagined that some of these virgins that are in our churches, and all they know is church, that they're going to be able to perform like, like the pornography that we've seen, and then we get frustrated with them and, and hate them in a certain way and then end up having affairs. But the devastating thing about it is that this woman kept herself and now you had an affair and now, you know, she's like, I don't even want to be bothered with no guy in church no more. I'm serious because I, 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 I waited, I saved myself and this is what happened. Or even worse, you could take and be a saved and, 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 and somebody has an affair on you. Next thing you know, you got an incurable sexually transmitted disease. You got herpes. And now you thinking that this is a death sentence. And now you're thinking that your life is over because you did everything that was right. And now here it is. I'm all jacked up. Who's going to want me now? You know, because every time you have a breakout, you end up having memories of, of that person and how you trusted that person. And then you got to go through all the hurdles of trying to forgive, trying to get healed. You know, and I'm not going to lie, man, forgiveness, the word is so easy, but the journey at times and the process at times is hard. But there is possibility in forgiveness, the possibility for healing, the possibility for deliverance, the possibility for restoration. But this is the reason why I say that we have to begin to really speak on these issues, because if not, if the church does not have deliverance, then there will always be shame when th these type of acts are committed against our people. Because the Bible says, the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. And so, you know, the one thing that we got to understand is that there are thieves. There are thieves of ignorance. There are thieves of ignorance that come to steal 
away blessings. They come to steal time. And they definitely come to steal blood and assets. And that's the God knows truth. And if it's able to take your blood, meaning basically, if it's able to take your time, if it's able to take your seed, then it can take you. It can, it can get into it, it can get into your bloodline, and that's the reason why, man. We got to begin to deal with lust because lust and the appetites are definitely connected. I'm serious. I used to think that lust was just sex. No, there's so many avenues for lust. Lust will take anything, and it's not just sex. It can be food, it can be power, it can be money, it can be anything because lust is an insatiable appetite. Lust can never be fulfilled. Lust is, is like a hole that, 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 that is never ending. You could put, I don't care how much water you put in it. It's like the dry land that will never be filled. It's like the barren womb that even though you put semen in it, it will never produce life. Lust is like the fire that never can go out. It'll keep taking, and lust is the spirit of hell. Because it just keeps consuming and consuming and consuming, and that's what hell is like. Hell will consume you, and hell never gets full. Lust never gets full. Lust is never satisfied. But the one thing that I love about God is this. Is that if you are thirsty, that he will give you drink. And that he filleth, oh my God. He filleth the longing soul. He giveth water and he and, and I'm, I'm telling you, he will fill you up. That's what I love about God. But see, when you start going outside of God, it ain't going to be enough. And that's why we self-medicate. Thinking that time is going to heal our wounds. Nothing could be further from the truth. Time does not heal wounds, especially wounds of the heart. So let's go back in here in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3, and we're going to go to verse 5, and we're going to go to part B. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. So that's the reason why I'm telling you that, you know, sex is for a time. And I gave you why we why 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 God gave it to us. The motivation for sex. But a lot of times, even in the church, the one thing that you know is better to marry than to burn. And, and man, we have heard that scripture, I don't know how many times. And so sex in the church is always a taboo subject, and we talk about sex in the following, because we say that it's better to marry than to burn. So we always talk about sex from the fornication aspect. We always talk about sex from the adultery aspect. We always talk about sex, you know, uh, homosexuality. That's number three. Number four, masturbation. Number five, celibacy. Number six, marriage. Number seven, pornography. Number eight, sexual violation. And so these are the things that, that we talk about in sex. But the one thing that we got to begin to do when it comes to sexual issues and even when it comes to talking about sex in church, we have to begin to embrace it. Because as long as we try to shun it, as long as we try to 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 take and 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 you know put it under, then we're going to always have problems with it. Because the thing that you real that that you got, I want you guys to realize is that once you begin to embrace it, you can begin to discipline yourselves. You got to begin to know how you work. Because trust and believe, the devil is going to figure out, yo, what's your combination, what's your trigger, what's your likes. So if you if you the type of dude like I was, yo, if she if she thick, if she's dark skin, got 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 a big booty, man, please. I ain't gonna lie, man, please. A light skinned girl couldn't do jack for me. I could just take her over to a dark skinned dude. That that's about it. But but that that was my that was my preference. I mean, I love some dark women. Jamaican, man, please. I'm like, man, it's too play. I'm like, yo, I can't go to Jamaica because I'm, I'm I'm telling you, my wife will end up burying me in Jamaica. I ain't going to Brazil either. 
Cause I said, man, God forbid, if God forbid me and my wife don't make it, hey, I'm 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 gonna get me a Hispanic woman. I'm serious. I'm, I'm like, hey, that's just me. Sorry. But 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 at the end of the day, man, the enemy knows. Seriously, the enemy knows. And so, and there's nothing wrong with you liking what you like. But you also have to know that that's the thing that you're going to be tempted with as well. So, you know, the Bible says that there is no temptation that is taking you, which because temptation is common to man. But the one thing that I love about it is that with temptation, God will provide a way of escape. You know, and, 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 and I ain't going to lie, we, could go, we are going to go to James. We just ain't going to do it today. Because we are going to have to talk about temptation because, you know, there is sexual temptation. And this is the reason why people fall into the, the sexual traps that they fall into. The sexual manipulations that they fall into. The sexual fantasies that they fall into. Because we got to begin to deal with... With the whole stigma of sex, we can't begin to trivialize it. And we got to begin to look at it as currency. We got to begin to look at it as currency. So, yeah, the church, you know, we, we've we heard the messages on fornication. We've heard the messages on adultery. We, we, and, and I ain't going to lie, they stay on the message of homosexuality. And we and they stay on, on messages about masturbation. They don't really touch that that much. But when it comes to celibacy, you hardly ever hear about celibacy now. And, and and definitely marriage. Because when I was married, you know, I mean, when I was married. When when I was in church, we heard about marriage. We talked about marriage. But the one thing that, that you really got to look at is that when, when you are married, here's the one thing, man, that they don't tell you. Is that everybody comes with a pass is that everybody has baggage. And at one point, you're going to have to begin to unpack that baggage and deal with the past. And you got to be able to accept the reality of where that person is. And here's the criteria that I was given in church during the time when I was young. If they born again, if they got good credit in the job, they marriage material. That's all I heard. But the one thing I'm going to tell you is this, is that there is more to a person then them being born again, them having a good job and good credit. Because at the end of the day, you got to begin to deal with the other stuff that comes with that person. You got to know, man, what is that person like? What are they like when they get mad? What is their family like? What is their family background like? Do they come from trauma? I mean, and these are the, and these are the questions that, that we don't have. Because the crazy thing about it, oh, yeah, come on, let's let's get married so we can have sex, and and and, and that's the motivation at times. And, and I'm gonna tell you this, man, my pastor he gave us the four M's of ministry, but I'm gonna tell you this: there's definitely four M's. You can use them for life. What is the motive of a person? What is the mannerism of a person? What is the method and the message that they are giving and sending? What is the application that they are using? And that's the one thing that we have to begin to, to really look at when we are, you know, call ourselves getting ready to go into marriage. Because I look at it like this. Marriage is more than just good credit. Because you can hook up with a person, you have good credit, they have screwed up credit. And because, you know, their upbringing is different from yours, they can take and ruin your, your good credit. There are some women, they have married men, and these men have been nothing but saboteurs in their lives. And then they look at their lives and like, I don't have nothing to show for since this man that came into my life. Because the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he has no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. And, and, and I think the key word that we have to begin to look at is add. Because some of you, man, I'm going to tell you this. You have had good sex, but they ain't add nothing to your life. And that's the God knows truth. And some of you women right now, you are saying, man, he make me feel so good, but he is so bad for me. 
That's the God knows truth. Here it is. You up here, you know, you going off to work and leaving him at home and his boys coming over and he, man, they playing video games all day, smoking weed all day. And then you get back home that the house is junky. The refrigerator is uh, damn near empty. And here it is. You coming, coming in with your kids and the house all smoky and, 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 and the crazy thing is you getting into arguments because ain't nothing done. He ain't did nothing all day. And then you get ready to confront him and, and, and to take and turn you off. He start kissing all over you. And next thing you know, y'all having sex and you forgot about what you was going to tell him. What you was going to say. He sexed you out. That goes for men, men as well. If it is you up here get mad and oh baby, and next thing you know, man, she, she unbuckling your belt and getting on her knees, and next thing you know, man, she done sucked you off and you done forgot got amnesia. I'm serious. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, sex sometimes will give you amnesia. See, God knows truth. I'm serious because I ain't gonna lie. Some of us, man, because the sex is so daggone good, we forget about the little stuff. Man, she done sex your brains out so good, you totally forgot that you done ordered out at least 10 times in a month. And then you looking at your checking account like, why well, got all these daggone grub, hub, and door that? Man, Negro, old girl don't know how to cook. That's why. She could sex you good, but man, please, she don't know jack about that daggone stove. She wouldn't even, man, you could put her in the kitchen. She wouldn't even know how to turn it on. Seriously. And she looking at you like, I don't do that. So we got to get to the place where we come to the table with more than just our ass and penises. Seriously. We got to get to the place where we come to the table. With more than just good credit, more than just the fact that I'm born again, more than just the fact that I have a good job. Because the one thing about life is that you have to begin to add to that person. Because there are some loyal people. They're, they are loyal because you give them sex. There are some people who will always be loyal to you because you give them sex. And as soon as that sex is cut off, they ain't loyal no more. Or as soon as they, you know, just, you know, Somebody out here is offering them something a little bit better, bigger and better. Hey, sorry. Sorry, Susie. You know, like that LL Cool J song, Big Old Butt. Susie got a big old butt. Lisa got a big old butt. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm serious. It's crazy, man. I'm, t- I'm telling you. And I'm, I'm telling you, some of you dudes, man, you, man, you, done, man you, you got all kinds of credit card bills because that WAP was good. I'm serious. Oh, man, please. I'm telling you, you got the brick house. You you got the you got the girl, man. Please, she make it, man, you you 40 some years old, got yourself a 30 some year old girl, and man, she making you feel young again. You're like, oh my God. I'm serious. I'm serious. You, 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 you singing a stylistic song. You make me feel brand new. I'm serious. <laughs> oh my God. But I'm here to tell you right now, man, is that we got to begin to get to the place where it has to be more when we come to the table of negotiating. When we come to the table of potentially finding a mate to marry, that it has to be more than just, I'm born again, she born again, I got a job, she got a job, I got good credit, she got good credit, or somewhat good credit, or vice versa. It has to be more than that. Because it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Seriously, because I'm going to tell you, there are marriages that have broken up because one person wants to have kids, the other person don't. There have been marriages that have broken up because of in-laws. Because here it is, you feel as though that that it should be God, you, then your mama. When it should actually be God, you, and your spouse. And some and, and you got some of these mothers that, that they feel as though that they're the only woman in their son's life. Like, man, the only thing you ain't doing for the boy is sexing them. 
And there are some women who have to contend with that. That's the God knows truth. So, so man, I'm telling you, this is the reason why we have to begin to talk about sex. We got to begin to talk about relationships because we are jacked up. And in one way, we're going to end up seeing these things at the altar, whether they're coming up for prayer or whether they're going to be in a, a marriage or whether they're going to be a funeral. They're going to be at the altar one way or another. And the one thing that I want, if you're going to be married, I want you to be healed. And if you're coming up for deliverance and restoration, we're going to get healing and restoration right then and there. But deliverance needs to take place. And if and if we doing your funeral because of sex, then we need to make sure that the mistakes or some of the things that you were involved in that 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 people will begin to learn from that. Because I look at it from from like this: if 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 sex was the reason why we we mourning you. Then maybe somewhere down along the line, man, we missed it. We missed it with the messages. And the one thing that we got to do is make sure that we put this message out here. And this is why we are going to be talking about sex. We're going to be starting talking about sex in February. I'm doing a relationship segment with the Brother Leon show. And yeah, this is going to be a part of it. But we definitely going to be going into sex, talking about truth and life, urban ministry. And that's the God knows truth. So. Let's go on down. We often think that the devil created sex and that God doesn't want us to have it. Man, please, God created you. God created your, your genitals. God, man, please, that man, that daggone vagina that you love, <laughs> God created that. That penis that you love, God created that. Them breasts that you love, God created that. That big old booty that you love, God created that. And man, Negro, you need to praise God every time you, every time your wife gives you that, shows that, flash them, got the girls out, man, please, man, nigga, you better praise God. Seriously, you, you need to praise God. She got the lingerie on and ain't got the bonnet on. Praise God. I'm serious. And I look at it like this. I'm, I'm telling you, if she got the grandma, if she got the grandma nightgown on, and, and and you got a curvy white. I'm gonna tell you, yo, man, them grand the, the nice the nice smooth ones. I ain't talking about the the rough ones, the winter ones. I'm talking about the nice smooth ones, the summer ones. I'm telling you, yo, you you can get it in because all you gotta do is just lift it up. <laughs> you probably like, man, this nigga right here, he ain't no pastor. Yeah, I'm a pastor, but I'm the realest pastor you gonna hear. That's the God knows truth. So, you know, God gives us all things richly to enjoy. And God made sex. He made your genitals. He made it so that you can enjoy them. He made it so that that she is the one that you desire. And the one thing about sex is this, is that you begin to have that bond. Once, once, Once you are pronounced, once you are pronounced, that seals the deal. You are in, you are in covenant. And there is a covering in covenant. And when you take and you and you you know mess up your vows and, and, and cheat on your wife or cheat on your husband, you are, are, are messing up the covenant and you are ripping up the covering. Because I'm gonna tell you, man, that the, the Bible says that the woman is the glory of the man. And that the man is the glory of God. So when you take and you dishonor your vows and you abuse your wives or you abuse your spouse then what you are doing is you're actually taking and turning that glory into shame. The Bible says that I will not have my, I will not give my glory to another. And when you as a woman take and cheat on your husband, you are giving your glory to another. You are dishonoring the glory of God over that man. And you taking your glory and you giving it to another, another one. Man is the glory of God. When you up here and you cheating on your husband, not only are you, are you, you know, giving your glory to another one, but you taking, turning that glory into shame. And you're also taking, giving your glory. If you have a son, you're giving it, you, you sin it against him too. And that's the God knows truth. Not only are you sinning against your husband, you sin it against yourself, but you also sin it against your son and you sin it against God. And men, when you are taking, giving yourselves to another woman. 
you are take and you are dishonoring another man's house. You are corrupting his glory. You are turning his glory into shape and there will be recompense. The Bible says, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Hell no. Man, nigga, I don't care if you got on asbestos gloves. That type of fire, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, can't nothing keep that fire off. And that's the God knows truth because the Bible says that jealousy is the rage of a man. What is rage? Rage is a fire. A fire that consumes. And the crazy part about it is that we, we, we always get so trivial when it comes to jealousy. And then you wonder why we have songs like, oh, I bust the windows out your car. And then we wonder why we always have, uh, 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 you know, people fighting on Maury Povich. And on Jerry Springer. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, we've allowed these men to make millions off of trauma, off of exploitation. Man, I looked up Jerry Springer. I mean, oh my God, 27 seasons, 27 seasons, 27 seasons of exploitation. And that's the God knows truth. We've got to do better because the media loves it. I ain't going to lie. I, I love, I love a little bit of ratchet, ratchetness that I see. Because now, you know, righteousness is now entertainment. Seriously. All you got to do is just look at one of these Real Housewives shows or look at one of these, you know, hip-hop shows or look at, you know, some old episodes of Maury or look at some old episodes of Jerry Springer. I'm telling you. Ratchetness sells. Sex sells. Scandal sells. Controversy sells. Because it has been so taboo. And we have got to get to the place where we as the church take the taboo out of sex. God gave us all things richly to enjoy. God created us in his image and in his likeness. And he told us to replenish the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. So I'm going to tell you right now, man, you can sit up here all day and try to say that, that God don't want us doing that. But, hey, Deacon Jones, he ain't got eight kids for nothing. Been married to the same wife for, for, for 20 some odd years. Oh, trust and believe. And that's the reason why she called him uh, daddy. That's the, that's the reason why he called her mama. Some of these church mamas, please. Man, yeah, catch them in the prom of their day, in the prom of their life. Oh, they, oh, they, they can tell you some stories. Oh my God, I remember. Oh my God, I remember the story of my grandmother telling me how she got my grandfather, and she was telling me, man, my grandmother went to to Delaware State, and she was a majorette, and she showed me a picture of her doing that split. I was like, Dad, damn, now I know how she got him. Because my grandfather, I mean, man, he cooked every day for her. I'm, I, I, I can count on one hand how many times my grandmother cooked because my grandfather did all the cooking. I remember he was in the hospital and he checked himself out of the hospital to go home and cook Thanksgiving for my grandmother because he didn't want her to be without. Seriously. And so... You know, I look back and I'm like, man, when she showed me that picture, I was like, well, yeah, I know how she got him. I'm serious. I know exactly how she got him. That dad going to split. I'm like, man, she was a dark skinned woman at that too. Psh, please. But we got to get to the place, man, where we think that God don't want us to have sex. He told us to be fruitful and multiply. To replenish the earth, but but we've we've allowed the enemy to get in there and to put shame on our nakedness. And then you know, and then we think that 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 the devil created sex because he came in there and brought sin into the garden, and then you know we got exposed, and then we began to cover up our private parts. But here's the one thing that I want you to understand before the fall of man, the glory of God covered their naked flesh. 
And you can be naked and not ashamed because the glory of God is in your house. And this is the reason why I'm telling you, you don't want to get caught up in affairs because affairs start with conversation. The same conversation that took the glory and exposed the man and his woman in the garden is the same conversation that came to Jesus when he was tempted. The same conversation and temptation that comes to you. It's a conversation that starts with a question. Hath God said, you should not surely die. You, man, you can get away with this. You, you know how your wife is. You, and I'm telling you, most of the time when temptation comes... It always comes at a time where shit is blowing up. You you in a bad spot, and next thing you know, here comes Superman to the rescue. And it seems like good information at the time. And next thing you know, there it is. You get relaxed, you get open, and you just like Samson. You done told your whole heart. And next thing you know, they done got the secret. And now next thing you know, you lying in their bosom, lying in their bed, there it is. So I'm going to tell you right now, something has to give. That's the God knows truth. It, 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 but it starts with us. It starts with the church. Seriously. So, let me give you this scripture. Let me give you some music too, I'll fill it. 1 Timothy 6 and 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that you can be rich in sexual energy. You can be rich, you know, when it comes to, 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 to sexual currency but the one thing I want you guys to understand is this is that don't put your trust in just sex alone because if you feel as though that you're trying to build a relationship just off of sex alone it's like you know like I was talking with Miss Eden Adele it's like trying to take icing and create a cake it's not going to work I don't care how many cans of icing that you get because sex alone is not going to make a relationship because the one thing that you got to realize is that you have to be good outside of the bedroom Man, you can sex all over the house. But once you get done coming, you got to get to the place where you can have a relationship. You got to be able to really like one another, be able to talk to one another. Because there's going to come a day where sex is not going to be into play. Seriously. And that's why I gave you Ecclesiastes. And we're going to go back to that. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So there's going to be one day that the sexual act will not be there. And you still have to be able to have that loving relationship and companionship that keeps people together. You got to be able to like one another. And that's the God knows truth. Some of you need to be friends. You need to be friends. You need to have that genuine like for one another. It's not about the fact of, okay, I like her, you know, because I like how she makes me feel. You have to begin to like her. You have to begin to like him. And it can't be about, you know, I like him because he does da 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 da. And it's just one sided. Because a lot of people feel as though that I have a successful relationship, but the other person is like, I feel like, man, they ain't giving me jack. I'm unhappy in this relationship. And the other person's like, what are you saying? I got everything I want. But I'm going to tell you about relationships. There's, there, there's a pouring. One person has to give, the other person has to take, and then there has to be vice versa. Grace goes both ways. One person has to pour, another person has to receive. And then the other person has to pour, and the other person has to receive. Even when it comes down to sex, one person has to give, and another person has to receive. And you should be able to have those conversations about sex. Because I look at it like this, a lot of people have broken up because of sex. Because they haven't had those conversations. You need to have those conversations about what you like. How you like to be touched. If if you have, you know, if you guys, you know, have experienced sexually. If you guys are virgins. You need to begin to have those conversations. Because if you're looking for a certain particular type of sex. And that person is not willing to do it. Then, yo, you're going to be frustrated. 
And the next thing you know, here comes temptation because you got Sally Sue. She willing to do that all day and twice on Sunday. So you have to ask yourself, like, am I willing to walk away? Because we could talk 80-20 all day long. And if and if and if it's 80-20, and, and and it's not even in the 80, what you like, then yo, you might have to be like, mm, nah, sorry. I I I no, I I no, I, I can't do that. Sorry. And there have been women that have turned guys down because it was just certain things that they wanted. And they was like, nah, uh-huh, nah, I can't do that. And then there there's has to be guys who are going to be, you know, be honest and say, hey, this is what I like. Can you do da, 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 da. And if she ain't willing to do da, 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 da. And if it just grosses her out and it's like, you know, nah, then you have to ask yourself, okay, am I willing to, to walk away? Seriously. Because it's just some things you just can't compromise on. Seriously. Especially if you didn't got used to a certain thing. Because I'm going to tell you with men, once we get the sex we like, that shit is on the menu. That's the God knows truth. I'm serious. Men, like Chris Rock said, men cannot go back sexually. Women cannot go back financially. That's the God knows truth. And that was gospel. I'm telling you, some of these comedians are prophets. And preachers. So I'm telling you, man, we got to begin to do better. And we can't begin to trust that sex is going to keep us for the entire, you know, time frame of the relationship. It's not. We often think at times that sex is dirty and that saved people don't do things like that. Man, please. I'm going to tell you right now, man, please. There are women right now that can talk in tongues and will have you talking in tongues as a man, sexually, seriously. There are women right now, I'm going to tell you right now, man, it's like this, like, oh God, oh God, oh shit, oh fuck, I'm serious. And then as soon as you take them there, oh, 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 ah, 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 don't, 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 oh, 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 don't, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. And you think it to yourself, like, this woman don't never cuss. Man, please. She cussing in that bedroom. And some of you right now got condemnation because of that. Nah, you ain't got to have no condemnation. The Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation who are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says that, 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 oh my God, that the marriage bed is undefiled. That marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. So you got to begin to look at yourselves. That, you know, nah, I'm, I'm not going to look at what I do with her as dirty. Because some of you right now, man, you've been, you know, been condemned because you didn't had, you know, sexually repressed preachers tell you that having oral sex or having anal sex is going to send you to hell. Ain't nowhere in the Bible that says that. Because the Bible says that marriage is honorable and all and the bed undefiled. Now, if you up here having sex, you know, with somebody that's not your spouse, then yeah, there's a possibility. But if it's just you and your spouse and you are okay with it and she is okay with it and you guys are in agreement, then there's nothing wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, don't be listening to them damn preachers like that. Because what happens is, is that what comes in your house as revelation can sometimes be a wedge. And the crazy thing about it is that that is his personal conviction. That is her personal conviction. And that's the God knows truth because there are so many people that we cookie cut and we say, Hey, you know, this is going to send you to hell. But the crazy thing about it is that you got to look at the fact that everybody can't have sex the traditional way. And that's the, that's the gripe that I have. And that's the reason why you guys should get my book. Let no man put a sunder, kick the clergy out your bedroom because I talk about that. And, and, and at one point, I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing episodes and doing some readings from that as well. But for right now, I just want to tell you right now that, man, we got to begin to take the stigma off. Just like you take your clothes off. But here, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, that, that man shall not live by coming hard alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You got to begin to have God in your house, God in your relationships, because if you allow people's theology and personal convictions to come into your home as a revelation, it'll be a wedge and it'll be a wedge in your bed. 
And the crazy thing is, is that next thing you know, you mad at the church and you mad at the titles of ministry. You mad at the prophet, you mad at the apostle and you have good reason to be. Because some of you, you have taken the word of the apostle and the word of the prophet and you made it greater than the word of your spouse in the house. And that can never be. Because if that man is the glory of God in the home and outside the home, how is it that you can take a person of ministry that's not married to you, does not have covenant with you, that has not covered you, and take and make his word greater than the word of your spouse? How? All that does is cause division. And a house divided itself will fall and it cannot stand. It cannot stand under that type of pressure. And it cannot stand under that type of temptation. And then next thing you know, you wonder why, hey, here it is, your husband in the church, but he's running off with the usher. Because here it is, the usher didn't talk to him. You know, the usher, the, the, the usher, you know, saw the goodness in him. And all you seeing is the fact, oh, he just want me to suck his dick. And next thing you know, old girl is giving him that and some. He's getting blowjobs and biscuits because you don't want to cook. Because you done got frustrated at him. Seriously. Let's turn this music back on. You done got frustrated at him. Seriously. And then the crazy thing is, is that you guys get a divorce and then you say, I'm just, he, was, he, he just wanted too much for me sexually. No, nah, nah, because you, we're supposed to render unto each other due benevolence. And our bodies are not our own. My, our, your body belongs to your husband. His body belongs to you. But then you're pushing him off. And then next thing you know, hey, it's always going to be somebody going to pick up a, going to pick up a drop ball. I'm going to tell you that right now. But some of you don't want to hear it. And you think that 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 you standing on that stance of I don't want to go to hell. Man, please, you already in hell. Hell and came to your house. And then the crazy part about it is that as soon as you confront your pastor with what you said, he go, oh, I didn't mean it like that. There it is. And now he's saying he ain't mean it like that. And then some of these pastors, man, they will tell you, oh, hey, don't do this. But they doing it. They will sit up here and tell you, don't cheat on your wife. And they got two and three girlfriends. They got a harem of, of women when they go out of town. Some of these pastors is in the closet. Some of these pastors got body counts. Some of these Negroes got bones. And there's people out here that got receipts. So I'm going to tell you right now, man, you better work your marriage. You better do what is beneficial for your home. What's beneficial for your wife? What's beneficial for your husband? Because I'm going to tell you right now, yo, if you don't want to make him scream and holler, trust and believe, there will always be another woman who will. I'm going to tell you this, brothers. If you don't want to be there for her, trust and believe, it's going to be some other dude, and he's going to be like, Lord, I thank you. And I'm going to tell you, man, the one thing that you don't want to see, you don't want to see your woman looking good in the arms of another man. That's the God knows truth. I said, man, God forbid something happened to me and my wife. I'm moving out of town. Because I'm like, man, the town we live in is too fucking small. I'm like, please. I ain't want man, please. You think I want to see your ass with some other nigga? Hell no. <laughs> please. I ain't going to lie. I want you to have the best. But that don't mean I want to see it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm just being honest. Oh, my God. Why is sex and shame always linked? together because we've allowed the devil to have it have you ever heard the saying that blood is thicker than water yeah i have but here it is come is thicker than blood and so you got to look at the fact that semen and testosterone are linked there are semen retention semen retention builds up testosterone and, and there and there's a practice called semen retention it is a practice that allows a man to have sex and orgasm without ejaculation. So you got to begin to understand that, sisters, there are brothers out here who are learning how to do that. Because not only does it build up testosterone, they can orgasm another way without ejaculating on the inside of you. And so some of you are probably thinking like, yo, let me make sure I get me a nigga to know how to do that. Then I ain't got to worry about getting pregnant and we ain't got to use condoms. I'm going to tell you right now, 
You need to get make sure you're getting tested for everything. Because I'm telling you, you lucky if you walk away with a baby. Because some dudes right now, man, they ain't going to tell you that they dirty. They live in foul. There's some girls out here, they ain't going to tell you that they got herpes. And you up here, man, please, you eating her out like you eating groceries. But I'm going to tell you, man, look, you need to start having sexual hygiene. Seriously. You need to start having body hygiene. And that means, man, making sure that we are clean on the inside out. Making sure that our soul has, 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 you know, soul hygiene, spirit hygiene. Serious. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong, you know, doing things in the right manner. But making sure, man, that nobody walks away felt, feeling filthy and dirty. Seriously. And so, man, we, we, we got to get better. So let me give you this. Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. And that's the reason why that we can't take sex as being trivial because there's an atonement. There's an at one minute. When, when, when two people come together, they are atoned. They are atoned. They are at one. And the Bible says that they should be one flesh. Talking about the man and his wife. And so, you know, this is the reason why we, we have to flee fornication. This is the reason why that we need to be married. But then we also need to understand that we have to have those hard conversations. That's the God knows truth. We have to begin to have those hard conversations. Because without having those hard conversations, we go into speculation. We go into assumption. We go into imagination. And that's what's killing us. When we assume, because how, how do you spell a, a, assume? Assume is this: you make an ass out of me. A S S M E. Assume. A S S U M E. Assume. If I'm spelling it right. So we can't begin to assume. We can't begin to fall in love with imagination. We can't even fall in love with potential, because potential can can at sometimes. It can fail us. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that we got to begin to take the stigma off of church, but also off of sex. And the stigma of sex is tied to the stigma of church. We got to stop being ignorant. Stop, got to stop being ignorant. Because, you know, the spirit of ignorance has come and what ignorance is, is darkness. But the Bible says that in him, talking about Jesus, in him was light. And that light was the life of men. So where there is life, there's light. Where there is light, there's understanding. Where there is light, the enemy cannot successfully defeat you because you see him. You can see the moves. But where there is darkness, where there is ignorance, that enemy can always be successful against you. And so, hey, I want you, man, please, as a pastor, I want you guys to be having sex, having babies. I'm going to be doing baby dedications and marriages. Very few funerals. Seriously. Baby dedications and marriages. Counseling, marriage counseling out the yin-yang. That's what I want. But we need to have those hard conversations. Because I don't want you just getting married to avoid fornication because here's the one thing you take and get married just for the, the you know, for the motivation and, 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 and for sex. But then you don't open up another can of worms because you don't know who this person is. And yeah, you got the ring, but you don't know how they are. You don't know how their family is. You ain't di dived into their family background. Y'all haven't had no hard conversations. And they need to be able to accept you good, bad, ugly, crazy, and indifferent. And still be able to accept you. Because I'm going to tell you, man, there's some fair weather people out here. But you want somebody that's going to be there for the long haul. You want to make sure that you can trust them. 
and you don't trust in marriage. You trust during the dating period. If you can't trust them during the dating period and they don't already cheating on you, what the hell you think they're going to do when they get married? Seriously. They didn't have a baby on you during the dating phase. What, you, what the hell you think they're going to do when they get married? If they done abused you during the dating phase, what you think they're going to do when they get married? Because marriage is like money. It only makes you what you are. It makes you more of what you are. So if, if you were selfish, it's going to make you more selfish. If you was narcissistic, it's going to make you narcissistic even more. There's a whole lot of women out here thinking that they done, got cra- they done went crazy. They dealing with these narcissistic men. And then the crazy thing about it is that they get all bruised up and then the next dude comes along, man, that nigga got to be Barnum and Bailey Circus jumping through hoops and getting only half of what she gave all to the, to the first dude. And that shit ain't fair. That's the God knows truth. So, man, we got to do better. But I just want this to be a start because I'll probably be coming back tomorrow and we're going to um, talk about sex again. So I just want to entitle this Talking Dirty After Dark. Oh, my God. And there was a movie called that, too. But I just woke up this morning, man. God was just dealing with me. I'm like, man, I'm like, man, I'm waking up all hot, 4.30 in the morning. I'm like, man, I need a new mattress. I got to get some cooling gel, something. I know my wife probably thinking, man, you you try you you trying to freeze me out. I'm like, nah, I'm just hot. I mean, I'm hot with a sheet. <laughs> like, you got the heater on and and everything. I'm like, oh my god. I, I'm like, Lord, something got to give. But anyway, that's just my issue. Pray for your pastor. But we have to begin to get to the place, man, where we take the stigma of sex. We got to begin to change it. We got to take the stigma off. We got to take the shame off. So I want you guys to be blessed. And we are definitely going to be back here tomorrow talking about sex. So talking about fornication and lust. And we definitely going to talk about marriage. So, hey, guys, peace. You have yourself a blessed day. Walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets. truth that makes you free every day follow brother leon on all social media outlets